we are driving through the forest near Topol to a very notorious feature in the landscape called the Kaimanawa Wall. Now, the Kaimanawa Wall has been um, described as evidence for a it's quite a bumpy road uh, as evidence for an ancient civilization in New Zealand because apparently this feature looks like it's a man-made megalithic structure. Um, ancient megalith or natural feature? Let's go and find out. So we've just arrived um, and parked up and right beside the track here there's a Kaimanawa wall literally a few meters away so we're going to go up and have a look. Okay so first impressions bit of a rock face, big tree on the top. So there it is, the Kaimanawa wall. So some people have suggested that this is a man-made feature so I think with Bruce's help we'll have just a close look and just see what we can see and take it from there. Okay so Bruce, I think we'll we'll spend some time just looking, shall we? And then we'll have a chat and see what you think. Well, and I'd just like to say, my, I'd just like to say that my first impression is that it it looks man-made. I I can agree with people. It looks like this face is man-made. The face doesn't look natural to me, initially anyway. Uh, we've been driving along for 15 or more kilometres through the forest. And this is the first bit of ignimbrite or hard rock we've seen anywhere. Everywhere else we've been seeing road cuttings of loose ash and pumice. But uh, here we've got solid rock so it's quite uh, interesting that why is this solid rock here and nowhere else to be seen nearby. And we're at the foot of a slope and most bluffs of ignimbrite and solid rock occur near the top of a ridge crest where the often they do have nice vertical joints and blocks slip away and leave a, a vertical face in these bluffs high up on the the ridge crests but generally the bluffs aren't down low like this with no area beneath up on the tops the the blocks that slip away then roll down the scree slope and create a scree there is no scree here there's nowhere to see where some of the blocks from here have gone to. So this is an unnatural place to find a vertical face or bluff of hard rock in the forest here. <coughs> vertical lines sort of aren't perfectly vertical, they're a bit offset and then this one bends here there's another block, if you like, a vertical line. It's not very straight, but it does go up and diverts a bit from that one. This one has got a tree root down there, so the tree has grown down into a crack. And could be responsible for that. Could be why it's Lots. broken broken off bits. Maybe. Over here we've got another vertical crack that bends around. And both sides match each other, don't they? Uh, yes, both sides match, that's right. We can look at the texture on the surface, this horizontal grooving lineation that just passes right along the face, doesn't it? Yeah. So we've noticed there's a couple of unnatural looking holes in the face here, this one and this one. I think they're clearly made by humans well, I can't rule out the fact that they may have been made more recently by somebody coming to, to view the, the face. The face continues with some tree roots over it. Looks like some people have been digging down here, look. And then these vertical cracks are all over the place. These are not... Um, not what you might expect. There's one if it was built as a slicing piece. off that direction. And here's another block that's peeling off with a crack behind it. All right. Bruce, tell us what an ignimbrite is, just for people who are not from the local area who may not know. Well, 
an ignimbrite has been deposited from a incineratingly hot pyroclastic flow. So that is we get a huge eruption out of a caldera volcano and uh, it starts to flow sideways as a hot cloud of gas and crystals and pumice over the land quite rapidly. It's a huge thick cloud and as it comes to rest it slowly compacts, cools and solidifies into this ignimbrite rock which has got pumice in it, crystals in it uh, and ash. And if it was really hot and it's really thick then it slowly cools and as that mass cools it contracts and we get the uh, get cooling cracks through it. Do we keep looking for a while or do you feel you've already got a, any thoughts about? Well uh, I'm getting some thoughts but but further along there might be something to see. Okay can we just yep. carry on around? All okay. Right. Okay here's a bit more turning up. It's like a few footprints. Be... Somebody's been up here. Oh, this is quite good. Oh, more. Um, oh. There's a lot of... So, people have scraped this away, um, which is really interesting because we can see the top surface with quite a few cracks. And they're going at different angles, but they are very straight. Some of them, that one by your stick. Yeah, that's a very straight one. So that's interesting to me. But then um, these two are going at different angles to each other. Yeah, some at different angles. All right. So um, let's go and have a look down in the in the crack. Okay, what have we got here? Oh, oh, that's great. We can oh. see the bottom of the of the hold. Um, very smooth oh. face. So I've got a horizontal rock surface I'm standing on, just like that horizontal fracture we saw back at the the first site. But here we've got this very smooth vertical face at perpendicular to the horizontal surface I'm walking on. It's very clean. That's right, except for somebody's scratchings on here just recently. So, okay, let's just get the picture. So that it's coming from under that log, that, that face. Yep, it's coming from under the log and then there's a block in the front and then it seems to be, I don't know, do you think people have dug this out or has it shifted sideways? Well, uh, looking at this, this, this block here, you know, I think it's come from here and slid down to there. Oh, okay. So we've got two fractures that are vertical with this, a narrow piece in between that it's slid away from. So this whole block seems to have slid downhill yeah. and the tree there has gone down with it. Because we are at the top of a little bit of a slope down to the road. Well, quite, quite a bank so there, it's yes. it's quite possible for a heavy rock just to migrate down. Yes, yes, quite easily. Uh, this area gets quite a few earthquakes and uh, any number of earthquakes could gradually shake it and it could slide a little bit further. The summarised thought is that we've got a vertical face here, like at the original site. We've got a horizontal uh, surface, just like the original site. But when we look at this what was blocks back at the original site, we go up the hill here, it's not blocks at all, we've got fractures across through it at different spacings, at different angles, but they're vertical. So this here certainly is convincingly part of the natural outcrop yeah. that we're seeing here. That makes sense. So I'm now being influenced away from the wall being built in blocks. This clearly shows we've got similar features but it's clearly part of the in-situ outcrop of ignimbrite, these particular faces here. Okay. There is there's one question I have though Bruce before we leave here. That face is so smooth, is it possible that that's been shaped by humanity? Anything's possible, yes. <laughs> Yeah. But, however, uh, yes, so humans can easily make a face as smooth like that, but so can nature. Okay. So we see all around in rocks of all different kinds fractures uh, of various sorts. Some are cooling cracks, but others are due to various stresses in the rocks or release of stress as the rock is being unearthed by erosion. So we do see some very straight fractures or joints, we call them, through the rocks and various sorts. Quite commonly you have sets of fractures uh, parallel to each other. And uh, in this instance we've seen one vertical, which the face here is, another set that's vertical but perpendicular going into the cliff, and this set here that's horizontal 
along here and a horizontal one lower down beneath us here. But if we come round further, we'll see that those very regular joints, that's a, still quite f flat and straight, that planar one that's dipping down, but the vertical ones have become quite irregular up through here. You can see that people have been digging down along the face of this vertical face here and we understand from reports that they went down about a meter and then they uh, came across a flat surface that extended out beneath us here uh, that's parallel to the original horizontal joint that we've got going through the face further along. So we've got two sets of horizontal joints with these smooth horizontal faces only here it's completely covered with leaf litter and soil and material. And here, here's another aspect to those joints. These joints go right through and cross each other. If you were building a, a brick wall or a block wall, you would have the blocks offset. So this block would be over here, and this joint would be there, there, and then the next joint down. They'd be offset to give you greater strength. Why would this have just lined them all up one on top of each other? Someone who believed that these rocks may have been brought in, took a sample and had it geochemically analysed at a laboratory in Auckland and it came back as a rhyolite. They looked at the geological map and it said the whole area through here was made of ignimbrite and therefore they said, aha, these are foreign rocks that have been brought from some distance away and on the geological map that was the closest was 30 kilometres from here. So they hypothesised that these rocks have been brought at least that far into here. The only trouble is, of course, as a geologist, I know that ignimbrite is in fact a kind of rhyolite. These blocks at the top here are different thicknesses and their tops are beveled back or sloping back parallel to the spur coming down from above. Up here it's a different height but it's still sloping back and that slope is, is varying somewhat and comes down here which is also parallel to the slope of the spur down in this direction. So this suggests to me that that surface is hard and fresh and goes back to the time of the glaciation, the last ice age. At its peak 20 to 18,000 years ago, this area was really cold, there would have been ice much of the year and there would be no forest. This would have been subalpine, maybe grassland at times and even bare rock in places. In the ice ages and during those cold periods the force, natural forces were quite severe, the wind, the rain, the ice, and they would have stripped off all the soft uh, ash layers and weathered ignimbrite on top and got down to a hard surface on hard solid rock and a little bit of grass coming up in between. So that surface to me goes back to that period and then over the top of that we've now got leaf litter and soil and in many places where we drove along quite a thickness of loose ash and pumice that's been erupted from the number of volcanoes nearby here in the last 15,000 years. Here because we're on a slope it's quite thin, the ash and loose ash and pumice that landed on the slope possibly got washed off quite quickly in the rains. But the, now that we've got trees, the roots have been holding the, the soil and leaf litter on top. So Bruce, from my understanding, you're saying that these blocks are naturally separated from each other by joints in three dimensions. Uh, my question is, what's happened to the blocks that should have been in front here? I can't see them on the ground. What, what do you think is going on there? Well, I come back to my first impression. This is not a natural face. This has been man-made, this face. I believe that the blocks that were in front of here may have been taken away and the slope coming down the, the, the spur here would have naturally come down like so. And the blocks in here have been removed and we're right next to the road. So when the road was made, they obviously would want some hard rock to, when they're crossing to the streams, etc. And here they discovered there was some hard rock at the foot of the spur and it was cut into these beautiful blocks. These blocks just pull out because each of these is loose but tightly packed along each of these joint planes. So they could very easily get in, pull out the blocks and take them away. So I believe this is a quarry face and it goes down a metre or so beneath us and the blocks all the way through here have been taken out. And so this is a man-made quarry face and that's 
why this block here has only recently moved. Having removed the blocks that were holding it in place, now with the earthquakes etc, a little bit of shaking, it's gradually moving and sliding its way out of the cliff. How big do you think the quarry was? Well, I look here, I can see that all this face here is not natural and we went right along further where we saw there was the block sliding out with that perfectly vertical smooth face. I think there the block has also moved out into what was a hollowed area that where they'd taken the, the support away, the support blocks away for use probably in road making. Are there any other possibilities what they might use them for? Are they quite good building blocks? Well, some of them have come out, but they're still pretty heavy, two metres by one metre by one metre, perhaps. They're very large. Maybe they could have used them in building something to do with the, the timber mill along the road here. But uh, they, have had to cut them up a bit. they may have cut them up somehow or split them, yes. So our conclusion for Kaimanawa Wall is that it is a natural volcanic deposit coming from an eruption at Fakamaru about 330,000 years ago. The features that we see are natural. These are joints. They are not representing blocks that were brought from elsewhere and stacked together. These blocks are continuous. They're part of the same outcrop all the way along. However, Humans have quarried away some of these blocks, pulling away material, leaving the vertical joint face on one side exposed. So, is the Kaimanawa wall man-made? We find no evidence at all for an ancient megalith here. What we do see is a human impact that is likely less than 100 years old. Ironically, it has been made by removing rock not bringing pieces in and building up a pyramid. That also explains the unusually flat clearing in front of the Kaimanawa wall.